So big, big shoes to follow for me after Chris. Um, so I'm going to be introducing Servant, a little R shiny package I've created. And I think it's an even simpler tool of getting uh, very precise survival extrapolations to use in HTA. Um, So about me, I'm an assistant professor at Warwick Medical School uh, in MedStats and HGA. Uh, I'm deputy director at Warwick Evidence, and we're one of NICE's TAR teams. So that means we uh, work on the front line of HGA in this in England and Wales. And uh, yeah, so I've, I've been there since 2017. As a team, we've been going since 2011. So a real wealth of expertise. Um, on the front line. Uh, and I'm also recently appointed as a member of one of NICE's uh, technology appraisal committees. And I think Gabriel said we had a nice intro earlier in the week. So um, I think you probably all know a bit about survival analysis if you've paid any attention to Chris's talk. So I'll, I'll whiz through this very quickly. Um, so how does survival analysis fit into HTA? So we have some time to event outcomes and we want to look at the area under those curves. Um, if our data is not complete, then we need to extrapolate to get a, a defined area under that curve. Um, so how do we do this? Um, usually we fit a series of parametric models to those curves and using uh, visual fit, information criteria, uh, clinical plausibility of the extrapolations, we pick a preferred uh, set of extrapolations and then we combine those and we stick them in a healthy parametric model so this is called a partition survival model you've got your pfs and your os extrapolations and uh, those two curves gives you three health states so you've got the people in the progression free health state under the pfs curve you've got the people in the death health state above the overall survival curve and in between those two curves you've got your post progression survival health state um, so sometimes that works, I'm reluctant to say, well, it, it works. Um, my, my PhD was looking at the performance of uh, parametric survival models in this setting, and it's, it's not great, to be honest. Um, so, uh, yeah, so here's some problems where I've, I've faced in our nice appraisals where it really hasn't worked, but we haven't had many other options. So... Um, problem number one, uh, we, uh, we we have to allow an extrapolation. We, we look at dozens of different disease areas uh, in-house team. We're not experts on them all, or perhaps even any of them. And we so we, we get expert opinions in to predict what's going to happen next. Are these patients uh, in a good place? Are they likely to have a really low future hazard rate? Or are they just hanging on in there and, and likely to do badly? So in this example on the screen, um, there are, uh, I think you can just make out the pink follow-up, and uh, that's the observed period. And we've then asked three clinical experts, well, what happens next? What, what do you think is a, a plausible extrapolation? And so we've got uh, green, blue, and yellow are the three different predictions. And um, uh, they all disagree with each other, but they all think each other's is, is, is plausible. So as an EAG, we want to try and explore these fully, we want to see what the impact is on the cost effectiveness uh, results of our comparison. So um, what can we do? We, we fit the regular set of parametric models to the data and uh, hope that they are somewhat representative of uh, the predictions and we can just pick the, the one that's closest uh, and, and whack it in as a scenario analysis. Uh, for the, the yellow one, the Weibull is actually a pretty good approximation. I, I think I'd be happy with that. Um, the Gomputs is probably not quite pessimistic enough. And those other two dashed lines, the long normal log logistic, um, I'd say they're probably not going to give you exactly the scenario you're after. Problem number two. So this was from one of my very first technology appraisals. Um, we have the control arm of a phase three trial. Uh, so all these patients are on chemotherapy. And as usual, we fit a series of parametric models to that data and we extrapolate into the future. 
Uh, in our critique of this uh, submission, we spotted that Cancer Research UK had published uh, a five-year survival rate um, for this exact population. So we were able to deduce, so that's represented by this dot, we were able to deduce that uh, the qualities for this population are probably underestimated. But could we do much about it? Uh, no, we, we could have requested the company fit more models, uh, but uh, as, we, as an EAG, we never get the data, so we're reliant on them fitting the right models, um, but we don't know what the results are going to be. So uh, no guarantee of getting any improvement over this. And then my, my third problem, uh, a very recent appraisal that is still ongoing, uh, we are extrapolating data from an extension of a phase three trial. And that sounds good until you realize actually we just want a subgroup of, of that population. And actually, I would love to show you a capital mile plot for that population, but one doesn't exist. The only information that was reported was the median OS and median PFS with some confidence intervals. So uh, you can't fit a model just to a medium. So let me introduce Servant, my our shiny creation. So um, the, the basic of it is survival interpolation. So you specify uh, a couple of points and Servant will give you out the, the parameters uh, for the survival extrapolation for the parametric models that interpolate those desired points. So if you change those tick boxes and squares on the left, then the output on the right will update accordingly. So uh, you can probably already imagine, I don't need to show you, if we plug in a median survival, uh, we will uh, immediately get out an exponential distribution. That uh, only goes to one point, only one parameter. Um, if we want to combine that with a clinical expert's future prediction, we can do that very easily um, and, and look at the two parameter models. So um, going back to our Cancer Research UK data, um, where we, we had the problem of the extrapolations not uh, agreeing with Cancer Research UK's output. Um, so this is what I put into Servant. Um, and so we've uploaded the data to Servant. That's very easy to do. So you can visually assess the fit um, and picks out the median survival. I've uh, got to be honest, uh, this isn't a very good fit. Um, it looks like there was a reason all those extrapolations, uh, when fitted to the data, didn't match the cancer research UK. It's hard to be consistent. However, Servant will let us. Oh, yes, yeah, so Servant will let us um, delay the start of our parametric model, so you can uh, just uh, just fit to uh, the desired period and uh, avoid any periods where there's quite a complicated underlying hazard rate going on with some unusual survival uh, distribution properties. So um, as you can see, we've now, with the use of Servant, got an extrapolation that is consistent with our data and consistent with uh, the Cancer Research UK. So I, I kind of want to challenge the point of why are we always obsessed about extrapolating data in uh, nice technology appraisals? The data's uh, never, if it's come from a trial, the trial's never designed really for extrapolation. Um, and then we might get really wacky extrapolations out. So instead, should we just try and get something that's somewhat consistent with our data? Um, and often, maybe not with this data set, but most data sets, if you uh, use Servant to get a, a, a model and you were to overlay that with models actually fitted to the data, you can't really pick it out. It, it, it fits equivalently well. Uh, visually, at least. So um, going back to our first problem, when we had these uh, disagreeing experts uh, plugging in some points from the observed follow-up and from the uh, clinical expert opinions, then we can get um, very precise parametric curves that, that um, are consistent with it all, and we can responsibly, as an EAG, uh, explore the impact of these opinions on the cost effectiveness. So um, on to the additional features of 
servant. So um, servant, the graphs are made using Plotly. So um, this means you can easily interact with the graph. You can zoom in, um, hover with your mouse and find out which model is which. Um, if none of the models are quite right and the truth is, or what you want is somewhere in between them, then you can uh, tick a box to add the average survival function of your selected plots. Um, you can change Tmax to go and look what's happening in the future of your extrapolation. So um, it, it will automatically adjust based on the point you select. But if you want to go further ahead, you can do that very easily. Um, and if you do that and you don't like what you're seeing, then you can apply background mortality and it has built into it uh, the ONS, latest ONS data and you select your age, uh, your sex proportion and what units of time we're using and it will then um, make sure the hazard rate doesn't exceed that of background mortality. That's a very common uh, feature we, we see in technology appraisals. Um, and are there, I'm guessing there's some health economists in the room, you're probably wondering what about the uncertainty? Um, well, if you upload your data, um, then Servant will automatically fit parametric models just to your data and will we'll populate the table with all the uh, variance and covariances. And uh, if you select just a single model, then an option will be will appear to run a PSA and it will uh, sample a thousand uh, sets of parameters and will plot a 95% confidence interval around, so that's the dashed line you can see on this plot. <coughs> I haven't yet got it working with the background mortality, but um, that, that's why the, the orange line is going outside the dashed line. Um, so yeah, that, that, that makes an assumption of uh, borrowing that information about the uncertainty from your observed data to this uh, um, uh, set of parameters, but it's not really much different. It's not, it's not a step too far removed from our current practice where we just apply the, the, that uncertainty, that those parameters from the reserve period and assume they're going to bear hold for the, the full extrapolated period. So um, coming soon, I hope to add the option to uh, fully download the uh, survival function over time so you could say what your model uh, cycle is and um, not even need to use parameters or formulae or anything like that you can just get out your um, uh, survival curves so um, yeah it's currently free to access I will put it up there and um, if it becomes too popular then it will exceed the usage on shiny apps and so I might have to start charging to cover the hosting fee, but it will be uh, a small amount. Um, yeah, I, and I'm very open to suggestions of extra features. Um, it's, it's a work in progress, but one I hope I convinced you that it is simple to use and useful to use. So thank you very much. Any questions in the room? so far i mean i can see it's useful already because actually you say you, you can't fit to meetings but often in a clinical paper you'll have a curve for pfs or os and the opposite will be reported as a you've only got a 12 months you know and mm -hmm. 12 months survival was 70 percent like mm -hmm. great if there's not a supplementary appendix i can't, I can't yeah exactly so actually well yeah even even just for that would be mm -hmm. would be very handy um any questions on that now uh, not on my list yeah, um, it's hungry for lunch. I'm not going to throw it that far. I can't throw it that far. Mm. So you mentioned the end that you're you mentioned the end that you're incorporating uncertainty from the original trial trial data. Mm. Just wondering whether it would also be possible to incorporate uncertainty from kind of expert listed values. So you've got there, say, uh, median survival and another point, mm. but in theory you could have six different estimates of median survival from different stakeholders mm -hmm. and the same for the other one and then incorporate uncertainty and whether that was something that you'd considered um so you could definitely explore more independently i think that'd be definitely interesting to try and figure out how to combine that i think i might need to 
uh, ask Chris Jackson <laughs> how that's done. I can um, just say it's been really basically yeah. it's been really really useful where you just don't have any data except for a few points and you want to play around to get some sense of what those curves might look like. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. That would get complicated really quickly. What are you getting a pair of points different people? Well, those two points are correlated as well. So, or ask Chris. Um, any, any more in the room? Any online, Howard? Any from Howard? Any from Chris? It's currently under peer review. Um, but if you want to find it, search my name and you'll find my Warwick University profile, and there's a link there. That's probably the easiest. And I guess actually that as a point there is probably relevant. How are you finding it publishing an app? Because you're not publishing a method, right? You're mm. publishing, uh, I mean, I guess it's part method, but it's also mm. a, an app. Yeah, I got lots of rejections instantly. Journal's not interested. Uh, I'm currently with BMC Decision Making and something. Um, <laughs> and I initially sent a previous version there. And it, they rejected it because they couldn't find anyone willing to review it. So it's it's now with them again. Hopefully, someone will review it. And would you class it as a method or as an application? Because I guess what you're doing there is you're using, but you're actually by adding things together, you're you're making a method, right? Yeah, yeah, I suppose so. It's a bit of both. Can I say that? I guess that probably also. If we go to Chris, would you say yours? Are you taking some? An existing method or is yours a new method as well? I don't know. I'll have to see what the editors and the reviewers say. It's all this. I don't know. How do you define method? How do you do this? I think software is a method because it helps people do a thing. It helps people achieve something that they couldn't do before. So, I mean, in my view, it's a method, but editors may disagree. And there's a whole plan of publishing an application, similar experience, painful. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, with with Rex, uh, it was a it was a package that did things that other packages didn't do. So there was that argument for for it being uh, widely applicable. But that, that, yeah, that was in general statistical software. Um, mm. But. Yeah, it's, it's really sad. It's hard because I'll give you, I'm not, I'm not doing any stats. I'm just interpolating some points. Okay. So it's, okay. yeah, so I guess in, in a gray area. So, so the man that's giving us a whole bunch of uh, tables and numbers, creating stuff in R and a lot of decimal points with different methods, it's not stats. But uh, okay. that, I guess it's uh, it's lunchtime. So um, we've got till one, uh, no, we've got till two o'clock, I think, until we're due back. At which point I think we can count into more extrapolation. So uh, that's thank you to Daniel. Thank you. Thank you.